Firstly, we'll need to make some brackets to go on the roof. So we'll start off with a piece of angle line. And make some holes for the bolts to go through. This first bracket is going to be a template for the rest of the brackets and for the holes in the room. So we're going to drill the holes first and then we're going to cut the bracket off. We always use a small drill bit first to make pile holes for a bigger drill bit. And then we'll drill the holes, not all the way through, because we'll use this to mark the holes on the roof. And also mark the holes to make other brackets. So we're using this as a template. So all the brackets will actually be the same, so it won't matter if we mess them up. And then I'll just cut this one bracket off with the angle rider. Now using the utmost care and accuracy we'll measure and mark the holes for the roof. Now to make three more brackets. And there you have it. Three brackets made, a total of four. Drill some holes. Now these holes are for the rivet nuts, so you will need to take care not to drill right through the headlining on the other side. Time to use a bigger drill bit now, just gotta hope that it doesn't grab and pull right through the roof. Just gotta make sure the rivet nut fits as well. Now it's time to install the rivet nuts. This is what they actually look like, but I'm, I've just attached a bolt to them. This is the first time I've done it, so I'm trying to just work it out as we go. Um, in the end, I found out that there was a little bit easier way of doing it, but the bolt setup that I'm using just here works quite well. It just needs a little bit of oil to lubricate the threads and the washers so it doesn't grab too much. And it also helps with the um, 
if I use the bracket to actually go in between everything as well which I'll show in a few minutes because I found another way of doing it but for this one here just one go nearly ruins the whole bolt but afterwards using oil with it um, I did everything else and didn't ruin anything at all finding it so much easier now with the oil um, that first bolt was very very difficult um, but everything else afterwards with the oil on the um, bolt made everything go really smoothly now it's time to work out how the frame is going to go on the car this took a bit of time and thinking just to see how I'm going to attach the roof bars to the brackets wasn't quite sure um, but obviously in the end when you see how it's done it's actually quite simple but I had the basic idea in my head cutting all the bars for the roof rails to the desired lengths. Now I'm using a bit of flat steel to join all these box tubes together. So the same setup is going to be used, rivet nuts and just holes in the flat steel. So once the frame's assembled, mainly it can just be left all together, even though it's bolted it can be pulled apart. I'm just making it so it's easy to fit in the car if it has to go inside the car to be moved somewhere. It's always a good idea to pre-drill all of the holes first before you cut the steel because a bigger piece of steel is much easier to hold on to than lots of small little bits of steel at a time because when the drill bit grabs um, a small bit of steel it's actually hard to hold on to and quite dangerous. It's always a good idea to clean up all the sharp edges on the steel so you don't have a little accident. Now I'm marking out all of the pieces to put the rivet nuts in. Unfortunately we had the video not work where the welding took place to weld those brackets on the end.
Now this is a good demonstration of how to install a rivet nut. So there's plenty of oil on that. You can't quite see what's happening inside the tube, but I might get a better angle later on. It's time now to work out how the frame is actually going to secure to the car and so how it's going to be measured up and just working out that part of it. I have decided that I'm going to cut this bit of angle line, weld it to the roof bars or the frame, the big rectangular frame that I've made and they will line up with the brackets that are on the roof. Time to weld them to the frame. With all the brackets welded on, it's time to go and see if it fits up on the roof. As you can see from this part, um, it's always a good idea to protect your car with a bit of highly flammable material while you're doing your welding, so always protect your car. All the brackets are now attached to the frame, so it's time to see if it all lines up and it can be bolted onto the car. And actually it all worked, so it's all good. So I've purchased some marine ply, this is 12mm. Ideally it would have been thicker, but um, for one person sleeping up the top it should be fine. I'm not going to go too crazy with fixing it. It'll move around a little bit but um, with an air mattress on top of the inside the tent you should notice this is all going to be four pieces of ply. Um, it's not one big piece so it's all going to, the plywood is going to be inside the car while it's being driven around so when you get to the campsite it'll be assembled. Now I'm drilling the holes for the plywood to attach into so more rivet nuts will go into this and the plywood will be bolted into that steel. I'm 
about to find out right now that one of the rivet nuts are spinning in the roof. So it came a bit of a challenge to fix it. So what I did, here I am. I removed the one next to it, but the other one's still spinning. It's a bit hard to tell in this video, but the rivet nut is actually a little bit loose in there. So I need to be able to tighten that up. So basically I need to sort of re-rivet it, so to speak. So to tighten this rivet nut up, I'll need this bolt. I had a thought of actually putting the roof rack system, if you call it that, on the roof. And then if I tighten it down with that roof rack in place, it should also hold the rivet nut stable so it doesn't bend sideways as I try to tighten it up. So with all the bolts in place, I'm going to use this longer bolt to pull that rivet nut tighter. Now I've got some oil on this bolt, so the nut slides and can tighten up better. And there's also oil on the washers to help it all slide. Otherwise it tends to destroy the thread on the nut, being there's that much pressure needed to pull that rivet nut in. So with the frame in place, that'll also stop that rivet nut from turning sideways. So if you're doing a rivet nut this way, it's a good idea to have a piece of steel with a hole in it. Um, also clamped down to the surface you've got the rivet nut going into. Now to tighten up the rivet nut, or to rivet it more, you have to sort of tighten that bottom nut and keep the top, the whole bolt still. While you, so the bottom nut is essentially pulling that bolt out, but it's pulling that rivet nut tighter, basically. Now it's just a matter of once you've tightened it up, undo that. And normally it would come out easily by hand, but because this is the only hole in the whole roof rack system that doesn't come out easy because the roof rack's not completely lined up 100%. I could have drilled that hole a little bit bigger. I actually did in the end. I drilled that one and the cabin siding hole on the other side, which it fights against. But otherwise, it's not a big deal. The whole roof thing flexes enough to get it in quite easily, just like that. Now it's time to put the plywood on, it's 12 mil ply. I drilled the holes, line them up by sitting the plywood on top and marking where the rivet nuts were in the steel on the plywood and just drilled them out. Drilled them out a little bit bigger so there's more give, so it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. It only needs to be about 90% accurate and it all worked out just fine. Now it's time for the best part, well, I think it's the best part, the exciting part, putting the tent on the roof. After all there's a rooftop tent. Basically it is just a two man tent. And it um, just needs to be assembled on the ground and then placed on the, on the um, platform on the roof. I just need to stop it from falling off now, so I've got some rope. Well, obviously the wind could blow it off. Unfortunately, it's not too windy today. And all I need to do is use the peg down points 
and um, instead of using tent pegs, I'm using rope underneath the platform. Um, one would hope that that's all that's required. The last part of the setup, here we have a ladder, just acquired from eBay, it's just an extendable ladder, just to get in and out of the tent. So I'm just setting up the tent as though I'm ready to camp in it. There's also a little footstep that you can buy off eBay. Or you can buy them probably anywhere, but if you don't have a ladder, maybe that's an option. They're pretty cool little things. Yeah, to put the mattress up there. Now the mattress will stop you from, will definitely stop you from feeling the board underneath, the, um, the joints in the board. So this takes a few seconds, probably about two minutes to blow up, maybe completely. But in fast forward, it's not too bad. This is perfect. It's the best little tent thing I've built ever.